all right ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the channel so today we're talking about minnesota the minnesota vikings i love what they're doing i love their off season we talked about it a couple of days ago jonathan greener so underrated last season van ginkle coming over uh, from the miami dolphins with ties to brian flores the defensive coordinator in minnesota love the pickup blake cashman love the pickup underrated undercovered breakout season last year with houston aaron jones you stole my damn running back but it's okay um <laughs> uh it is okay but it is sad anyways uh they traded for a first round pick and now the minnesota vikings have the 11th pick in the first round and they have the 23rd pick in the first round and reportedly it is becoming very likely that the minnesota vikings will trade up to pick number four or trade up to pick number five and select jj mccarthy out of the university of michigan and folks we briefly touched on it in our last video i love it i think with kevin o'connell that is a recipe for success and i think it's a recipe for immediate success we're going to talk about free agency and a little bit about the draft. Uh, they also picked up Sha Shaquille Griffin earlier today. They're continuing to make moves. I have a feeling they're going to continue to make a couple of more moves. But the thing is this. What they're doing is they're moving into a more sustainable team offensively defensively now offensively it's kind of figured out they just need the quarterback at this point you know you cut loose with alexander madison you pick up aaron jones ty chandler showed you a lot last season averaging 4.5 yards per carry but the thing is this justin jefferson's 24 years old tj hawkinson's 26 years old jordan addison had a phenomenal underrated rookie season just because of the kirk cousins injury he's 22 the offense is ready to win right here, right now. And if J.J. McCarthy's your quarterback or whatever rookie quarterback you get, if it's the right fit, which <laughs> it's hard to not be a good fit with those weapons in Minnesota and that head coach, uh, folks, Minnesota's not going anywhere. And I mean that like they're they're not, you know, because they got rid of Kirk Cousins, like they're, they're still relevant and they're going to be relevant. But the point is they're going to be relevant for more sustainably long term in my opinion that's what we're going to talk about in today's video but before we do if you guys enjoy it be sure to hit that like button hit that sub button for daily nfl content uh vikings fans you guys know the deal we post a lot of vikings content on this channel let's try and get this video to 500 likes that would mean the world to me i do just want to say really quickly you guys are awesome uh you i love you guys so much like my vikings fans you guys are awesome all right especially like as a cheese head you guys open me with welcome arms i appreciate it a lot so i got a comment and uh just for anonymity and anonymity purposes can't say that word properly i don't want to disclose his name but he hit the nail on the head here and this was kind of the brief comment the number one thing the vikings must do is avoid injuries to their star players we're going in the right direction getting rid of some age and getting youth it's he's just right on the money there and what they're doing in Minnesota right now reminds me a lot of what Houston did last season. It's just personally, I think because Kevin O'Connell's already a couple years into the league, you got Justin Jefferson, you have like a, like literally the best wide receiver in the National Football League. You have one of the best rookie wide receivers, if not the best rookie wide receiver in Jordan Addison, and you've got such an underrated in general tight end in TJ Hawkinson. I think they're ahead of schedule than Houston was last year. You know, obviously, the Kirk Cousins injury completely derailed the Minnesota Vikings season. They held on, and I think that's like kind of indicative of you know their culture and the talent that they already have. Obviously, you lost out on guys like Daniel Hunter, uh, but it is what it is. Jonathan Greener, you know, for example, three years younger. You know, he's ascending, he's on the rise. Borderline star player this upcoming season would be my prediction for Minnesota. He's coming off a career year, 12 and a half sacks, career high in not only sacks, but tackles. Last season, 22.4 pass rush win rate. I mean, that's like almost double of what Daniel Hunter had last season. He's 265 pounds. He's versatile. He had a forced fumble. He had 15 tackles for loss. He had an elite 78.2 PFF grade. My point is this. You know, Houston was coming off a three-win season. They had a rookie head coach, and they, you know, hit on the rookie quarterback. And if Minnesota hits on the rookie quarterback, watch out. You know, one big knock that I see right now as a Green Bay Packers fan with Minnesota, or what you know, just what I see in the comments and on Twitter, et cetera, et cetera, is, oh, Minnesota's just not going to be good because you have to compete with Detroit and you have to compete with Green Bay. And I just want to say this. 
I like JJ McCarthy a lot. I love him in Minnesota. One thing I do just want to say really quickly is watch out for Sean Payton and the Denver Broncos because you never know there. Um, but if JJ or whoever the rookie QB is next season for Minnesota, um, just watch out because they have a more well-rounded roster. But my point is Houston went for like these one-year kind of prove it contracts on guys like Jonathan Greenard or Blake Clashman um, or you know Devin Singletary, Dalton Schultz, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but Minnesota's like kind of locking these players in, right? Van Ginkle, two-year, $20 million contract. He's coming on over, you know, familiarity with Brian Flores back in Miami. 69 total tackles, six sacks, an interception, eight tackles for loss. He had an elite 91.1 PFF grade. Uh, Blake Cashman, breakout season, 106 tackles, two sacks, nine tackles for loss, one interception, PFF grade at 83.7. You got, got guys like Ivan Pays, Cam Bynum. You, you get what I'm saying. Minnesota's roster is so much more well-rounded, but like I was getting at, the, the big knock is, oh, Jordan Love and the Green Bay Packers and Jared Goff and the Detroit Lions. And I'll just say this from a Green Bay Packers fan perspective. Typically, the best QB in the division wins that division, right? So if we go through the NFC North, Jared Goff's an above-average passer, but he's not like this elite game-changing QB. Jordan Love... Still unproven, even though I love him. You know, he's my starting quarterback. Unproven, makes mistakes, you know, has interceptions like we saw in that last drive against San Francisco in the divisional round. And then Caleb Williams, if, if Chicago drafts him, has not played a snap in the NFL. So people are saying that, oh, Minnesota, you know, they just don't have enough. And I'm thinking completely opposite. Like the NFC North in the next at least three to five seasons looks like it's going to be one of the best I've seen in a very long time. You know, it's just, the NFC North in general is looking really good and competition brings out the best in everybody if we're talking about competition. But my point is, Minnesota has so many goddamn weapons. And I think just in general, because of Kirk Cousins' unfortunate season-ending injury, uh, they're not getting the credit they deserve offensively, especially. And Brian Flores did such a good job as defensive coordinator last year that you're licking your chops if you're a Vikings fan. Like Justin Jefferson, TJ Hawkinson, and Jordan Addison. I mean, that's like, of course, off the off the dome, I can't think of a better top three duo, but like that's so young. That average age is probably like 24 years old. Minnesota's not going anywhere. And when they get their QB and you're going to pair them up with an offensive mastermind and Kevin O'Connell and Aaron Jones, my goddamn running back. Come on, guys. Like they're not going anywhere. And once again, I keep saying that, but you get what I'm saying. They're ascending. They're going to get better for a longer period of time. Like you, I get it, man. You win 13 games. You shock the NFL. And unfortunately, you lose in the first round of the playoffs. And things were looking good, but it was more short term, right? Because Kirk Cousins, final year of his contract, he's getting old and unfortunately just gets hurt. So I think long term, Minnesota is better than they were at this time last season. So let me know what you guys are thinking. Hit that like button. Hit that sub button. Let me know any thoughts that you have on the quarterback position for Minnesota next year in the, or this season in the draft. Let me know any free agents you'd look into as well. Plenty of Vikings content coming on the way. So thank you guys so much for all the support. Seriously, Vikings fans, you guys are awesome. You guys are so appreciative, so supportive. Uh, I, I greatly appreciate it. So that's it for me. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you soon. Peace.